Well, hello out there in Season the Crypto Bull Run Readers Land. This is Deanne D. Matthews, your author. And I'm here with a video. Actually, I'm going to do two because this was a reader request. Let me just pull it up here so I can make sure that I get it right. Uh, Linria5401 made a specific request about utility in crypto projects and how I personally evaluate them because it is understand, overwhelming understanding utility. So Linria, I did get your request and I'm doing a video as I promised I would. And also welcome to Mr. H.D. Campbell of the Office Corner, who also is joining us. Um, it's also a new person joining us, I know. So these two people I know, if anyone else has any questions when you read the book, do submit them on this exclusive channel just for readers, and I'll be sure to get to them as soon as I can. Okay, understanding utility. I'm reminded of, of beekeeper Mike Mary, I, Barry. I hesitate to say that you should do it how I do it. This is just how I do it. So there's two parts of my thinking on this. And part one is how I understand utility personally, because there's three classes of utility that I think about before I go look for it. First of all, I think of crypto as a technology play very much like 30 years ago, 25 years ago, you would have had an opportunity to examine, okay, can there be an online bookstore? There's this little place and thing called Amazon and this internet thing, America Online, what is that? But then you look at, okay, if they can do what the smack that they're selling, that's going to revolutionize the world. Because now, and of course, that can be difficult if you were an online bookstore owner. This was not necessarily something you wanted to see. But this is going to make it possible for people to do more reading and to do more reading in ways that do not require them to go to a physical bookstore. And then maybe someday they'll sell more of the books on there. But it would have been a kind of a deep play at that time to have seen that. The idea that people were going to be connected online the way we are today was very, very outlandish then as well, 30 years ago, 1994. Could not have foreseen the level to which we would be doing personal computing together, such as sitting here doing this. So that's looking at those stocks, not for how much money we thought they would make, but for what they do. How were they useful? What are their basic promises of utility? And then the second part of that is, what is the utility to you? Because if you're the one putting your money in it. So as a heavy reader, okay, I kind of like the idea that I could browse an online bookstore. Now, I wasn't investing in, in Amazon stock. 25, 27 years ago, I wasn't even a grown woman yet. <laughs> but I'm using these as an example because these are names that we know. But if I had been, since my family is three generations of book collectors, uh, we've got one in, at least one in every generation. That would have been something I probably would have been interested in because uh, we're interested in collecting books. So there's utility to me. You do have to determine what's important to you and what do you want to see enacted in the world. And then the second part about that is if it's been around for a minute, is it actually doing what it claims to do? So three elements. What is the utility? What is the utility to you? And can you see that it's doing what it claims to do? If it's been around for a minute, if this is not a complete speculation play, and speculation means we have no idea what's going to happen, we're just going to kind of put money in it and hope for the best. But if it's not a pure speculation play, then we want to see evidence that it's actually doing what it claims to do. So three parts. I was asked, Nenria, to look at a couple of crypto projects. Well, I've mentioned three in the book. I'm hesitant to recommend a great number of other altcoins because if you're a new person, you really do not want to be looking beyond the top 10, maybe top 20 cryptos. So I'm going to do this video and use Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Hive because they have some overlapping things that allow you to see the utility picture. Bitcoin claims to be the world's first truly hard money. That is, there's only going to be 21 million of them. Now, they're divided out to eight places. So if you think about a dollar, a dollar divides into 100 pennies. A Bitcoin divides into 100 million Satoshis. So there's a lot of divisibility there. But there are only going to be 21 million of them. So however 21 million is times ever however many Satoshis there are, that's all the divisions of Bitcoin that will ever be available. And because of this, because a government cannot come and inflate this money when they need to cover someone else's debt, that offers utility. Now, the argument against that is, well, okay, but that's not real money. 
well, the United States dollar hasn't been backed by gold or silver for a very long time. The United States dollar has only as much value in it as we believe it does and as the world believes it does. This is why you see a lot of interesting things in geopolitics when people make suggestions about moving oil off the dollar. Um, and every world ruler who has said something like that, up and including Mr. Vladimir Putin, has found himself in a little bit of a world of hurt afterwards. Then there's reasons that these things happen because the U.S. dollar is fiat, meaning by will, meaning that uh, it has exactly the amount of value as the people running it think it does, as the people who use it think it does. And on the day that people decide the United States dollar is not what they're going to use, it'll be worth toilet paper. So the United States dollar is not that far ahead as, as Bitcoin as people want to think. Yeah, Bitcoin is algorithmic money, minute, algorithmic money and it only has as much value as people think it does. But at the same time, it's not going to be inflated by outside hands. And also because it's a blockchain, everybody can see how it was created, how it was mined, all the ledgers it has. What's the ledger? You can go look at its transactions. You know where it goes. There's, there is... And it works without anyone interfering with it because it is an algorithm. No single actor can come through and manipulate what it does. So that's the utility of Bitcoin. So that's number one. Usefulness to me, anytime you are able, something that's very personal to me. I enjoy being able to use money, a type of money that was invented only in 2008. It means that it's not blood money from the blood, sweat, and tears of my African and Native ancestors. I enjoy that. That's a utility to me. The other utility to me is wherever I go in the world, Bitcoin is already there. And Hive trades to Bitcoin also. It's already there. It's a utility to me. And then, of course, how long have, been people, have people been using this? I can literally go up the street and there's a quarter store where I can take U.S. dollars and buy Bitcoin at the store. I just give them my wallet address and it's out there. I know people in countries where governments have forgotten how to have a good currency who are living between Hive and Bitcoin, and they're able to do this. Or between um, Hive-backed dollars and the U.S. dollar and able to support their businesses and, and whole regions of flourishing because they have access to this. So number one, it has utility. It is a non-inflationary money, not under control by corporations and governments. Although granted, corporations are def def definitely getting large amounts of it now, but Let's go with the first claim. It has usefulness to me because I appreciate having a way to store value outside the system that was literally built on the backs of my ancestors. And also, it is also international, meaning I can go anywhere in the world and exchange Bitcoin for whatever I need anywhere in the world. And it has been doing the work for about 15 years now. So, utility. Utility to me and the fact that it's actually doing what it says it's doing. That's an example. But let's say I didn't know about Bitcoin. Let's go back five years in my life and let's see if I didn't know, how would I find out? How would I understand the utility? Where would I go? Where would I find out? Now, I should also just say Hive has a lot of the same features, except that Hive does not require an initial investment, nor do you need a very powerful computer to do the cryptographic work necessary to mine your own Bitcoin. You have a computer. You get signed up on Peak D. The previous video is a walkthrough on how you do this. And you are able, by posting good content, to earn some cryptocurrency. You can also stake that and reinvest it and earn more in that way. So there's about one, two, three, four, five, six ways in addition, well, five in addition to content creation to be able to earn on Hive. And that Hive exchanges to Bitcoin. Hive gives you an opportunity to be in a decentralized, uncensored environment, well, at least censorship resistant. People be people in. Even outside a legacy financial system, sometimes people revert to bad habits. But Hive is highly censorship resistant. It's very difficult to be silenced there. So you get to do this in a censorship resistant environment. And so you're able to have the kind of conversations that sometimes YouTube and Facebook and all the rest really start to ding you for having. You don't get shadow banned there. Now, it's difficult to build an audience there because you also do not have an algorithm that is looking to pick you up. You've got to really build an audience. But here's the utility. It's censorship resistant. It's open to everybody as long as you can go through the hurdles of finding an account. Utility to me, I'm a prolific content creator. 
Y'all see me out here on YouTube multiple times a week. So if someone's telling me I can get access to crypto by just doing what I do, that's a utility to me. And like Bitcoin, it is available from around the world and can it be exchanged to Bitcoin around the world and now has a four, as of February, has a four year track record. Ethereum is somewhere in between these two, although it's actually much older than Hive. Well, in crypto terms, older. Um, none of these are more than 15, 16 years old. I think Bitcoin is 15 this year. Ethereum is probably about 11. I don't have it in front of me, but we can go find out if we want to, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. I mean, in the next video, actually. Ethereum, oh, I should say 0.3.5. Sometimes the crypto's utility is solving a problem or extending uh, utility that the previous one did not have. Ethereum allows people to build e-commerce applications, decentralized applications or dApps is the term of the art, on the Ethereum blockchain. So you get all the advantages of Bitcoin having a transparent ledger where everyone can see what was going on and what transactions took place and can confirm them and that things are validated by, by the community the way it validates them. And it can be done openly and not under control of one person. It's decentralized. But you also, if you understand the coding on which Ethereum is built, can plug in your thing and build it on Ethereum and then spend it in Ethereum. So if you got Bitcoin, you can trade it for Ethereum and then use Ethereum to pay the cost and do your e-commerce entirely in Ethereum. Ethereum is also available around the world. It doesn't get as much notice for that because the issue with Ethereum is Ethereum is expensive. So many people have built so many wonderful decentralized applications that work on Ethereum. Ethereum is expensive. But in the book, I talk about the Ethereum extended family and their utility is basically they trade to Ethereum, but they are not as crowded and the fees are not as high or they help their fellow Ethereum extended family uh, blockchains to be able to work together better. Or they are a little bit outside the Ethereum extended family. We get coins like Polkadot and Cardano. They offer the same features, but of course they're newer and they're not as crowded and they're built to be able to never have those clogs. And outside that family, way out there is high, which also is feeless. You need to have a certain amount of high power staked up, which means you're going to need to take your rewards and stake them up. But once you've done that, you're able to do as many transactions as your staked high power lets you do every day. So there are crypto projects whose utility basically is, okay, how can we make this access that Ethereum provides? How can we either relieve the congestion or provide an alternative? And that is their base utility. So if you believe in what Ethereum allows you to do in terms of decentralized e-commerce, that utility rolls over to several others. Okay, so that's how I understand utility. Three parts. It's base utility. It's utility to me. And is it actually doing what it says it's going to do? I'm conservative. So I don't really do speculative plays at this point in my investment journey. I don't. I prefer proven products. I may, because the flip side of this is there has been so, let's just say if you can't figure out what it's used for and it has a large and enthusiastic community, but you don't see any evidence that people it can do what people are saying it's doing, people can tell you anything. Look, I could get up here and tell you that I could get up here and tell you I was an Olympic gymnast. And someone would believe it if they never actually saw me in person because I have this big, beautiful voice and I can use it to make you believe whatever it is that I want. Well, crypto is you're going to go to the website and I'm going to show you. And you're a couple of distance removed. So you got to kind of look at that team and kind of do research on a new project. It's like, have they ever actually like done what they say they're doing? Because you've got some distance. You don't know them personally. So I prefer <laughs> and I recommend projects with a track record, which is why Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Hive. Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two OGs, if you will. 
Uh, and then Hive has a four-year track record, and I'm there. So I got to know how it runs from day to day. I've seen it over the whole lifetime of its run, lifetime of its run. I don't really look at newer projects. I want something to prove itself before I invest. And I have recommended the three most stable projects. So in the next video, but let's assume I didn't know anything about Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Hive. How would I find out about their utility? We'll do that in the next video. All right, then Rhea, this is number one. Number two is coming up. So this will be in the afternoon and the second video will be up this evening. So you'll have both of them today. See you in a little bit. Bye.